it okay to drink? No. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. This is where we talk about all things tech, innovation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing on Think Tech Hawaii. And today we have a guest who's been in the tech industry for a long time. My guest is Jeff Hong, CTO and founder of Techmana. Yeah. Very good. Thank you so much for joining me today. So, you know, before I started at HTDC and I've been here for a couple of years, I was in the tech industry, but I hadn't heard about Techmana. Yeah. But you're a pretty good company and you've got some good clients. So what is what is Techmana? Uh, so at Techmana, we develop um, primarily uh, uh, hospitality industry software. Which but, is perfect for Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, just about all of my employees are ex and or current Microsoft uh, developers. And so we specialize in the Microsoft stack. And perhaps we didn't, we've done a lot in Hawaii, but mm -hmm. that was, a lot of it was uh, laid down when I was working for Microsoft. And so I had mm. started the Microsoft office here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the late 90s. So wow. I've kind of been around, kind of been around the block. Yeah. Okay. And so how did Techmana get started? So Techmana got started in an odd way. Um, uh, I was having some um, differences of opinion with my vice president at Microsoft, mm -hmm. and so they decided, I was only actually working half-time at that time, so they decided they would have a layoff of all half-time employees. Um, Across the board, or just in the Hawaii office? Uh, just in the Hawaii office, but huh. I was the only one in that position. Um, so Indeed. either way, it was just a, a layoff of one. Huh. Yeah. And so from there, I actually started Techmana, mm -hmm. but uh, that actually led to something else that I've been working on, and that's this non-competition legislation that's uh, sitting in front of um, the legislature right now. It mm -hmm. actually just passed unanimously on the Senate floor yesterday, so we're pretty anxious about that. Wow. But it's, um, it's very interesting that in the technology business, mm -hmm. um, you look at places like California, where non-competition agreements are illegal. And so that really allows a community to develop, because people can go from place to place and know they can make a home in the Silicon Valley and you know, have employment from place to place. In Hawaii in particular, it's pretty difficult. I mean, you work for one place, you have a non-competition agreement, then you're literally kicked off the island. And so that was actually one of the things that uh, was about to happen to me and mm -hmm. through a lot of expensive lawyers and whatnot, um, certainly I had an exemption to work for one client um, wow. here in Hawaii. And it's weird, right? Like it was a hospitality industry client. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. Does that compete with Microsoft? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. but certainly these agreements are used mm. um, as a lever of business as opposed to actually kind of protecting some sort of intellectual property. Mm. So, yeah. That's true. But I guess in Hawaii there's not as many places to jump to either though. Yeah, and that's why it makes it very important, right, to have employee mobility for technology employees because if there's only a few places to jump mm -hmm. and you're stuck at the one place and you can't even jump to those other places, how can we ever build you know, a community of you know, innovation and technology talent? And so, fortunately, it looks like the bill will go through, and you know, we can bring people to Hawaii. Um, I'm currently working with Hawaiian Airlines, and we have a lot of staff. Unfortunately, we couldn't find the talent here, and so we had to hire through agencies on the mainland. And we're looking at some of their... For Techmana? Uh, for Techmana, and directly for Hawaiian Airlines. And so I'm actually on... Uh, contract to them as their director of commercial applications. Oh, so, has like, so like any customer facing application. Yeah, so wow. the kiosks and the, the mobile and the web and all of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. That's a big piece. Well, there's 190 staff. Wow. It's pretty big. For um, that piece? For all of those pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. But yeah. That's but the majority of them are contract employees. And so they're so, not here, necessarily. Uh, a lot um, of them are here. Some of them are in India. Some of them are in Atlanta. 
And, you know, it's, it's kind of terrible. You know, huh. why open a place in Atlanta when we could have those jobs here? But mm. you have to go where the talent is. Mm -hmm. And so we brought a lot of talent here to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, but their non-competition agreements say things like, you cannot work for the client or the client's client. Well, think about that for a little bit. Cannot you cannot work for the, for the client, client, Hawaiian Airlines, or the client's client, which is everybody in Hawaii. Mm. Right? I mean, who's Hawaiian Airlines' client? The mm. state, everybody that flies. Because nobody else does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, so these people at the end of their contract, not only can Hawaiian Airlines not hire them, but they can't work anywhere in Hawaii and they have to go back to the mainland and we lose somebody mm. that could potentially be a you know, new Working employee in a tech and, company and here. exactly. So it really makes it difficult. And it, you know, all of the large um, shops that are looking for developers have this type of issue. And so, you know, trying to alleviate the shortage of technology employees, uh, I hope this helps. It certainly doesn't solve it, but it's mm -hmm. a step in the right mm -hmm. direction. We don't need to get rid of people one by one. I can definitely see for the larger businesses like Microsoft, but like for a smaller business where it's just like, say for your business, for example. Oh yeah, no. But like there's small, like one or two people shops where, you know, you'd invest in somebody that you hire. No, and, and, and that, that is kind of the case, right? Is that um, for a small business that you invest in people, mm -hmm. certainly you don't own that person. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. they should go wherever they want. And you compete by making the place a great place to work by paying a competitive salary, those types of things. And certainly there will be losses on an individual basis because maybe that person still wants to leave after giving all of those, uh, providing those investments. But mm. to have a bigger pie kind of solves the problem of, you know, one person leaving. And so if everybody can compete for a larger pool of people, that's a lot better position to be in than everybody holding a tiny pool of people, which is kind of where we're stuck hmm. here in Hawaii. Hmm. Um, as part of the testimony that came in, I mean, we had um, economists from MIT, Harvard. Uh, they did studies in terms of how these agreements either bring talent into a place, like California, or Michigan, which changed their law from um, enforce, not enforcing non-competes to enforcing them, and it kind of drove their innovation talent away. And so Hawaii will be unique hmm. in that you know, we can have the ability to bring people here. I think when I was a child, I went to the Big Island, and there's a place called the City of Refuge. Have you been there? Maybe when I was a kid. Okay, I don't so, 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 so the deal there was if you broke a kapu, you could run to the City of Refuge because basically it was a death penalty for most things in ancient Hawaii, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you could live, right? Mm. And uh, California, if you break a non-compete, mm -hmm. California you can go to because non-competes are unenforceable, mm. and you can continue to work in your chosen profession. And so hopefully we can kind of have mm. Hawaii as a city of refuge oh, in the innovation see, see, and technology sense, because people can now come here and establish a business and still work in their area and kind of avoid these odious uh, you know, non-competition agreements. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How, did, how did you find your staff for um, So oddly enough, when I started um, the Microsoft office here, yeah. uh, there was still kind of a shortage. Of, it's always Technical. been a shortage, right? Mm -hmm. And so I went to the University of Hawaii, and I asked, you know, are you guys trying to produce software engineers or computer scientists? Hmm. And the answer was, I don't know, which is not a good answer, right? Because they had some people that were going on for their advanced computer science degree, mm -hmm. which is more like advanced math, and some people that would go into you know, developing software commercially. Mm -hmm. But that w it wasn't really targeted either way. So mm. I ended up teaching a software engineering class using Microsoft technology. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so one of my best employees, uh, she was one of my students. Wow, very that's homegrown. awesome. homegrown. Uh, example. <laughs> That's great. And then some of the other ones uh, uh, I've worked with here, and uh, subsequently they went to go work for Microsoft as well, and some others are ex-Microsoft folks. So hmm. um, that's primarily where I found people, just 
people that I've run into working or developing and that type of thing. Wow. How long did you teach for? Uh, that was actually only for a semester. I just kind of oh. was helping out, and I did that as a summer seminar. Oh, that's um, very cool. Yeah, it was very fun. That is very But it cool. takes a little too much time. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I would think so with all the prep. And yeah. Things. Very cool. We're going to take a quick break. All right. Thank you for being with us here today. My guest today is Jeff Hong, CEO, CTO, and co-founder, I mean founder, sorry. <laughs> CTO and founder of TechMana. And this is Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ray Starling. We co-host a show called Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, every Wednesday, 4 to 5 p.m. It's really interesting. You know, Ray has a way of unzipping these guys. He asks them these questions, and all this stuff tumbles out, and we find out stuff we would never know about without Ray's question. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome, uh, Jay. I, I'm very pleased to be your um, Ed McMahon uh, <laughs> every Wednesday at 4 o'clock here uh, on, uh, on the internet. So you can join us and see what's happening in the energy world. And there is a lot going on. So join us uh, every Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Yeah, come around. Be energized right here on ThinkTech. Aloha. One. Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. My guest today is Jeff Hong, CTO and founder of Tech Mana. So we were talking about finding tech staff. Yeah, so very difficult, right? Um, and I've also found some tech staff uh, through just you know working relationships, and and that's probably the best way. Mm -hmm. But it's really hard in a small community to find a mm -hmm. whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's what I was pointing out was uh, 190 folks, right? Uh, staffing. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, you wouldn't have imagined there were so many, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, it would have mm -hmm. been nicer to and. We're actively looking, for those of you out there. Oh, let us developers. know what you're looking yeah. for. Who are so you looking for? We're looking for, um, on the front end, the website is built in a technology called Sitecore, a, a content management system. Sitecore. Yeah, and all based on ASP.NET, the mm -hmm. Microsoft stack. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of those types of developers. The site also uses AngularJS on the front end. And so, um, Kind of dynamic front end, yeah, people. Can they be entry level people or? Yes. So we realized that, you know, the story of the woman I was just describing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think in Hawaii, you want to make the investment in people over time to um, attract and retain and make competitive people mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because we've tried multiple times to hire from the mainland and Certainly, a lot of people come for the adventure, Hawaii? yeah, uh, but uh, many times they don't last. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the, learning the airline business it takes about a year to be kind of proficient mm. in all of the archaic so systems that's that are a big available. Investment. Right, and kind of back to the non-compete thing. But once you hire them, you want them to stay, mm -hmm. and you want mm -hmm. them to, you know, stay around and and continue on in the community. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I guess for the airline industry, though, I mean, this is especially true. You can't go anywhere else. Yeah, no, it, it is true. Yeah. Or you could leave. Yeah. Um, and so we do hire a lot from other airlines as well. Oh, on the mainland. That's, yeah. That's interesting. Um, so you're from Hawaii. Yeah. And you've been away. Yeah. And you come back. What do you see as a big benefit to being in Hawaii? Um, like why did you why did you come back and start Tech Mana here? Well, certainly, you know, <laughs> there's a sense of home and there's a sense of being able to build um, things for the place that you call your home mm -hmm, to make mm -hmm. it a better place. Like this whole legislation thing is mm -hmm. because non-competes are bad public policy, in my opinion. And the boy, it'd be really hard to do that anywhere else where you could actually talk to your legislators and and have an effect. And they, they actually mm. listen to you, oh, that's and that you can kind of corral people around in that fashion. That's interesting. And so, yeah, no, all of those things are, are really attractive to coming home. And I I I've talked to you before. We um, I worked in Italy mm -hmm. in Florence. Mm -hmm. I was running the Microsoft office there, and they were a little embarrassed. They said, "Well, you know, we're this small little bank, even though they were the oldest bank in the world in Florence." And they're like. 
you know, can we develop cutting edge software? And what they didn't know was, I was sent there because they were actually developing fairly cutting edge software at the time, and mm -hmm. I was kind of leading that effort from the Microsoft side, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that you can develop cutting edge software anywhere, mm -hmm. you just need the right people and problems mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to go forward with to get this stuff going. And so, you know, certainly we could do it here in Hawaii. So when I was mm -hmm. um, working at Microsoft, one of the things that we did, the, the Hawaiian Airlines site that is there now is based on SharePoint 2007. So now that's old technology and people make fun of it. <laughs> but Hawaiian Airlines was the first publicly facing SharePoint site developed in 2006 as the launch customer for Microsoft really? with SharePoint. And so you can go out on the web and you'll see all of these kind of huh. old, you know, but Hawaiian Airlines was That's the star customer yeah, yeah, yeah. and was on the cutting edge at that time. Wow. And certainly um, with all of the technology that we're moving forward with with the new website, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they will be on the leading edge again. Oh, great. Yeah. Is that going to roll out soon? I mean, can you say anything? Uh, actually, the international beta is live right now. So if you go to the Hawaiian Airlines site mm -hmm. and you look at it in English, it looks like the old site. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it in Japanese or Korean, it oh. has all of the new... So um, we can get a sneak backend. peek, yes, sort you can. of. <laughs> and, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, within the next 30 to 60 days, you'll see the beta launch of the U.S. site, so yeah, I was saying, wow, it's a really busy time for me right now, so. Especially with Ledge and this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, keep busy. <laughs> Ledge is really busy, but there's a month and a half more, maybe, yeah. which is good. How long have you been trying to push this bill through? Bill through? This is my third year. Third year. Yeah. Mm. That's, yeah. And, it's an uphill battle. Well, and, li and like most legislation here, it takes about 10 years. I actually was not the original author of the bill. I looked to see if anybody else had, had run into this problem. And in 2002, um, that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, somebody tried to push this bill through. And mm -hmm. I just took that bill and kind of worked on it from there. But it mm. already had a basis, so mm. yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's been, it's been around for a while. What is, what is your biggest challenge? being in Hawaii, aside from Staffing. the non-competes. Staffing, I think, Staffing. Is, is probably the hardest. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, finding in interesting problems. So uh, it's lucky Hawaiian Airlines has lots of very interesting mm -hmm. problems to solve. Um, and you have other large customers as well. Yes, yeah, so I've been working yeah. with uh, Outrigger as well. Mm -hmm. um, oddly enough, uh, they're a Sitecore customer as well. And huh. so, yeah, um, they were a Sitecore customer before Hawaiian Airlines was, so I've been mm -hmm. looking at doing a lot of um, uh, performance analysis and those types of things. And one of the things that we're now free to do, when I was talking about uh, you know, being in a small place and thinking that you have limited means, with the cloud and all of that mm -hmm. type of infrastructure, you, know, you have multi-million dollar infrastructure that you can solve any problem with. Hmm with just the right application of technology. And so, like the Hawaiian Airlines website, the disaster recovery site, so you, you need to have this massive infrastructure to support um, the site when it goes down. But what we did is we hosted it in the cloud so that it can be mostly off. And in case of a disaster, mm. we can fire up all of these servers and mm. you know, kind of pay as you go. And oh, so, yeah, it's not something that you could typically do in the past because yeah. it's too not expensive too to have a, a data center up and running. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the other things that we've been helping out with, which is actually a common problem that you know, somebody should probably make a good business out of. I've been a little too busy to work on it, <laughs> but uh, is load and performance testing of all of these systems because generating the load was always a difficult problem because you need all of this infrastructure to generate it. Mm. But now with a cloud-based mm -hmm. infrastructure, certainly you can write a set of scripts that generate a load that come from all over the world to rain down you know, load to on all of these servers. Testers. Yeah, and then you can see how they react you know, mm. based on you know, real-world situations. Mm. So. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But so, so Techmana does, sounds like you do the front end, the customer-facing end, but also 
some of the analytics and the metrics? Yeah, we do mostly the architecture. So most, and all of actually my employees are very senior. <coughs> They're fairly experts in their area. Mm -hmm. so. That's great. <coughs> um, and so we typically are, you know, leading the development or, <coughs> excuse me, the architecture, and then ensuring that it's getting implemented well. And okay. so um, that enables just about everybody to work kind of more or less part-time on different projects. Mm -hmm. And that's a much better model than you know, totally being devoted to just uh, one client, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you might get kind of stuck. So. Well, that sounds like a great opportunity for someone new to work yeah. under these people. Yeah, yeah. So. and so we're, yeah. we have so, internships. Yeah. We have internships <laughs> coming up, too. So, uh, That's yeah, great. Fact, Where can we find more information? Um, that I'll have to get back with you because uh, we're still and kind of working on changes how going to, on. Yeah, no, just how to publicize getting more interns and okay, getting more okay. Staff. Well, we'll but, help you get uh, the word out. Okay, no, but where can we find cool. more information about Techmana? Uh, dub 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 dot techmana hawaii dot com. Techmana hawaii dot com. Uh, Great. Uh, and then you'll have your postings up there eventually for yeah. interns and new workers. Yep. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much for being with me here today, All right. Jeff. Well, thank you very much. And good luck with the bill. All right, great. Um, thank you for being here today. We'll be right back. This is High Growth with HTDC, and I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and my guest has been Jeff Hong, CTO and founder of Techmana. We'll be right back. Thanks. Here's the deal. Um, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm the host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is the Energy Policy Forum's program on Wednesday. That's how we call Wednesday Energy Wednesday. We call it Energy Wednesday every Wednesday. <laughs> Are you surprised? Okay, and we and we try to we get guys like Jim Alberts here from Hawaiian Electric who can tell us what's really going on in energy. We want to be informed. It's so important. It's the most important initiative in our state. <laughs> Clean energy is major, okay? And that's why we cover it on this show. That's the deal. What do you think, Sharon? I think that's great. That's why we're here every Wednesday from 4 to 5, and we hope you all join us so we can hear people like Jim coming on our show and co-host Ray Starling from Hawaii Energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here today. You've seen this. You heard what she said. What do you think? I think it's a tremendous opportunity for people to come together and talk about the issues. Oftentimes, there isn't a good forum to bring these key issues out into the public and this is a tremendous way to go about it and the the activity of this show is essential to keep talking about energy because as you said it's such an essential part of our lives that we need to pay attention to it and we need to think about the future okay Ray your turn well this is a special time in the history of Hawaii where we're making some pretty radical changes in the way we uh, use energy and generate energy and this show is the one place you can count on coming to every Wednesday and hearing something about the latest issues that are on the table being discussed that will affect us all going forward so uh, come join us and if you have some ideas you want to share with us about energy uh, give us a call and let us know we'll we'll put you up here and uh, and let you talk for an hour so uh, come see us. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be, from Think Tank's point of view, it's great to have this show. We love the show. It's our, it's our most important <laughs> show. So come around and listen to us 4 to 5 on Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Bye. Aloha. Aloha. Inspired by an ancient culture, classical Chinese dance, vigorous physicality, timeless stories, 5,000 years of Chinese music and dance. Shen Yun presents authentic Chinese culture. Coming to Blaisdell Concert Hall, May 8th and 9th. Tickets at ShenYun.com or call 808-792-3919. Hi, I'm your host on ThinkTech Asia, Bill Sharp. I look forward to, to you joining us each Monday between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, when we film right here in our studio in downtown Honolulu. The show, Think Tech Asia, focuses on contemporary events in Asia, and by Asia we mean anything from Hawaii, south to Australia and New Zealand, west to Pakistan, and as far north as the Russian Far East. 
clearly this is one of the most economically dynamic centers of the world. Uh, and we bring you up to date on what's going on in a whole host of countries in this very vital region. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC, and I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. We're still talking about all things innovation, entrepreneurship, tech, and manufacturing. And my second guest, oh, you know what? I want to tell you what's going on. There is a lot going on. Not so much in April, but a lot coming up. So Wet Wear Wednesday is tomorrow, April 8th. We'll be having an extra special event to celebrate the graduation of 22 new software developers straight out of Dev League. That's going to be Wednesday, April 8th at M Nightclub. Our brilliant sponsors are Data House, Rocket Communications, and CGI. They'll be getting the first crack at hiring these software developers. And come help us celebrate. It's going to be fun. This Saturday, April 11th, Lemonade Alley is having their grand finale event where the kids set up their lemonade stands and pitch their products. This event teaches us some business basics, including teaches them some business basics, including marketing, budgeting, and more. This event will be at Pearl Ridge Center. Come taste some lemonade and cheer the teams on. That should be fun. The second annual Mini Maker Fair Honolulu is coming up next month on May 9th. The Maker Fair is the greatest show and tell on earth, a family-friendly showcase of innovation, creativity, and resourcefulness, and a celebration of the maker movement. I wanted to let all you makers know out there that you are still able to sign up for a table to show off your making skills at the Mini Maker Fair Honolulu, but you need to sign up by April 15th. Registration is also open to attend this free event at the Iolani Schools Sullivan Center. So that's coming up. For businesses and entrepreneurs who need some quick legal advice, every other Wednesday, HTDC offers free legal guidance in partnership with the Business Law Corps. You can sign up for a 30-minute appointment at the Manoa Innovation Center. Please visit htdc.org legal to sign up for an appointment. Lastly, calling all SBIR Phase 1 winners, HTDC offers state matching funds for up to 50% of your Phase 1 award. If that's you, please contact us at sbir at htdc.org. All right. And now we are on to my awesome guest today, Attila Sures, founder of SOS Tech Solutions, an MIC client, and also a very familiar face at Think Tech Hawaii as well. Um, I'm not sure if you got to talk about your company on your show, <laughs> but you can tell us what, what is SOS Technologies. Well, SOS, as you might tech imagine, solutions. tech solutions, yes, uh, kind of brings the idea that there's probably something out there that's wrong in your technology landscape. We're here with the solutions. And today, what I really wanted to, to share with you, and to share with the audience, of course, is mm -hmm. how to really be prepared for any disaster, great or small, especially when it comes to your data. Is that your so specialty? Is that why the SOS, like... I need help. Need help, and we want to be prepared. <laughs> I love it. We want to be prepared. Okay. You know, we are on the most isolated landmass on Earth. True. As you know. Mm -hmm. And how better to make a living than to help others prepare <laughs> for what could inevitably end up here on the island. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, HCDC is well prepared for any sort of data loss or you know, they're well protected against all this stuff, but a lot of smaller businesses, which comprise of over 90% of Hawaii's economy, right? a lot of them are not as protected, mm -hmm. not as prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's really what I want to be able to share and give some advice and information to viewers. I think they find it pretty useful. So like, give me an example of a disaster. Well, I know there's hurricanes, and, but it's not super often. So what other kind of disasters are there? Of course, there's the little stuff that you probably notice with, you know, the lights dim just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the next day your computer doesn't turn on. That's little stuff. But you know, 41% of all disasters happen from user error. So that's almost half, 41%. <laughs> not acts of God. No, of course not. And let me tell you a great story that illustrates this perfectly. Now, have you heard of that story, of that movie, Toy Story 2? Yeah. Have you seen uh, it? Of course. Everyone's yes, seen have. it. Of course I have everyone's seen it. It's a silly question. Of course it's a yes. Of course. <laughs> now, if you've got kids, you've seen it. You've got kids. Times. Yes. <laughs> now, did you know that movie almost didn't happen? No. Almost didn't, didn't happen. Not know that. Now, let me tell you why. So about uh, maybe six months to a year into production, mm -hmm. all the developers are hard at work animating the story. And all of a sudden, Woody's hat disappears. And then his boots. 
And then Woody disappears they're on. while they're working. Like the whole thing starts to disappear. <laughs> and the project lead is like, What's going on? Ah! <laughs> right? So he calls up IT right downstairs, like, pull the server out of the wall. Like, just oh unplug the God. server. Unplug the server. They unplug the server and they're like, <gasps> okay. Let's turn it back on. Let's turn it back on. So they, they turn it back on. And sure enough, the movie's gone. Like, all of it. There's like a couple little things left, like a few, you know, Alice Toy Barn is gone. Oh all the characters are gone. Gosh. And it turns out that like some clown mm -hmm. had accidentally typed in one wrong command, erased everything. Oh. So That's horrible. they're running around like chickens with their heads cut off. Like, oh my gosh, yeah, all of our work yeah. is gone. If they had to redo the work from mm -hmm. scratch, mm -hmm. they'd, it would take them like a year working 24-7, wow. 30 people. Mm. Big problem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of course, this is, you know, this is Toy Story 2. This is the sequel mm -hmm. to, the big, to mm -hmm. the big movie, right? It, this is, there's, there's a lot of writing mm. on this. So luckily, uh, you know, the project lead was like, oh, you know, this is no problem. We have a backup. They have a backup. So sure enough, they show up with this backup server, right? Like, you know, the IT department wheels it in. Oh, we got our backup <laughs> server. We got our backup. They, they put it there, and they plug in the backup, expecting uh -huh. to see all their characters, all uh -huh. the ones that you love, uh -huh. all there. And sure enough, it's not there. Empty backup. What? No one had been watching the backups. So it wasn't backing up. wasn't backing up. So this should illustrate a point, right? So you should back up your data and then actually make sure it's there, right? <laughs> so... That's the second half of it. So that's where they failed. Wow. Now, so it just wasn't getting backed up. It wasn't getting backed up, mm. and all their hard work still missing. Now, obviously, we have a Toy Story 2 movie. <laughs> yes. So the question is, ending. right, where did it come from? And the answer is that one of the moms, like one of the head developers, was <laughs> yeah. a new mom, and she's like, you know, I'd like to see my kids every so often. It, it sure would be nice. Yeah. So I'm going to take a copy of the movie home with me, not let anyone know, <laughs> right? Just so she could kind of review the yeah, work yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and stuff. And sure enough, she was like, well, I happen to have a copy at home. <gasps> that was the copy. That, that was, was it. the copy. The only existing thing. The only existing one. So they, like, drove over there, and they, like, <laughs> packed it up with, like, blankets. <laughs> And That's and then they, crazy. you know, they took it all back, and they were like all nervous, like don't go around the corner too quickly, right? <laughs> and they took it, and they took it back, and sure enough, poof, there was everything. The movie was saved, and and there's an actually a really cute uh, YouTube movie. If you look up, the movie vanishes. The movie vanishes. You can see and that. It's that story. It's that story. Oh my God! And I have to write that down. You so got to write it down. Vanishes? The movie vanishes. In fact, we should ask users or viewers, uh -huh. to contact maybe Cindy sure. right here and get that <laughs> link. Wouldn't that be nice? Sure. Do you have like a, a social media feed we can? You can follow us on HTDC on mm -hmm. Facebook. Just search up HTDC org. Well, there you and go. And we can HTDC. put up a link. Yeah, we can put up a link. We can put one up on SOSHawaii.com. That's my company's SOSHawaii.com. There you that go. That sounds great. And, um, Ooh, I'm going to see that. So yeah, it's a fantastic <laughs> little film. It illustrates exactly what most people go through. Now, of course, you can't downplay climate change. We've had, we've had huh. a lot of things happen here uh, on, uh, you know, in Hawaii, mm -hmm. on the mainland. Mm -hmm. It's going Definitely. to be an ongoing thing. So be prepared for storms. Be prepared for things to go wrong. Be prepared for maybe the electrical grid to not be as reliable as you'd like it to be. Be prepared for accidents. Be prepared for when perhaps a truck hits a pole. Mm. Now, of course, who do they who do they call? Who do businesses call when this kind of stuff happens? They call <laughs> us. So we hear about it every day. You know, every day there's a virus. There's uh, something broke. Mm. Some electrical thing failed. Some electrical grid failed and fried a bunch of equipment. Mm. And so the next step is, how do we keep this stuff safe? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, of course, after the break, I'd like to share six steps this will keep the the viewers interested how to how to keep your data safe and i'll give you guys six steps and tips on how to do that um but it's really important that you really focus in on what is it that's the most important thing to your business that's your data mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not your computers it's not your equipment all that stuff is really easy to replace and if you don't have that mm. data you don't have your customers if you don't have that data your customers are going to depend on you if they have data loss so imagine if we have like a major catastrophe come in, mm -hmm, come in mm -hmm. right? 
you lose your data, your customers lose their data, they come to you, you know, can you provide me with uh, important, uh, you know, service history? Mm, can you provide me with my any, backup? Your backup. Where's my backup? Yeah, where's my backup? <laughs> so it's super duper important, not just for you, but as a member of the community to continue to put this, uh, you know, put this into best practice in your own business and make mm. it all work. So. Interesting. Is that something you provide, backup service? Uh, we do do the backup service as well as the planning and all of the, you know, everything that's involved in having business continuity. Now, this is called BC. So BC is business continuity planning. That means it's not just, oh, where's our data? Mm -hmm. It's, There's no oh, interruption in service. Right. How do we continue to operate? Now, mm -hmm. banks, by the way, in Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, would you say that they, um, they have an important role in society? Probably, yes. How about in Hawaii? <laughs> Would it be important for a bank to stay running Probably. if there was a Definitely. natural disaster? Mm -hmm. You know what they do? They have a separate office somewhere else, ready to go. Food, water, everything. Oh. Phones, uh -huh. computers, ready to go. A separate office. Correct. Okay. And the key like personnel. in a bunker someplace? In a bunker someplace. And okay. uh, th this is multiple banks have this. This is not just mm -hmm. me talking. Um, and they have a business continuity plan. If something happens, mm -hmm. they can move key personnel mm -hmm. to that offsite location. Interesting. And keep and things going. To function. Yeah, seamlessly. Wow. It's an important role they have in society. We yeah. appreciate them having that level of preparedness. Definitely. Very interesting. We will take a quick break and we'll be right back. And we'll talk about those six tips. Six tips. Keep your data safe. This is Think Tech Hawaii, High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and we are talking with Attila Sures, founder of SOS Tech Solutions, and we'll be right back. Aloha, Yappers. This is your host, Kingsley, for the Yap Show. Every Friday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, you can catch us here live, Think Tech Hawaii, and then later on, we upload to our YouTube channel. We talk about youth issues, policies, uh, youth programs, and how to transition yourself into adulthood. But this was like a sign, I guess. Hey, Mike's like, hey, <laughs> right. now's your chance to go back to school, which uh, I'm doing. Catch us here again live, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Aloha. Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leatham, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon. And on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing I'm you. I'm guessing you didn't Thank watch you. my BBB webinar. That <laughs> sounds good. Welcome back. This is High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and we are chatting with Attila Sures, founder of SOS Tech Solutions. And he is telling us and small businesses how we can be be prepared for disaster, especially keeping your data safe. And he promised us six important tips on how we can do this. Right, of course. I don't like to just go out and say, there's a big problem without offering. Here's Solutions. what you can do about it. Great. And it's not complicated. A lot of this is procedural, really. But I've identified six things that are really important for every business to stay operational. Now, the first thing is pretty obvious. Files files, right? Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, okay. Excel files. Everybody has files. Everyone has files. Now, <laughs> the question is, where do you put your files? Mm -hmm. You, you kind of get like this, this uh, digital landscape of thousands of files spread out over years. And uh, <laughs> you hope, right, that there's a mm -hmm. good plan in place so that when disaster strikes or, you know, something happens and a virus comes in or a user error occurs, just like with the Toy Story uh, story, uh, that you're going to have some way to put all that back together and make some sense out of it. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, there's the cloud. Now, the cloud is a, is a, is a big, uh, it's a big conversation. We could talk about cloud for four hours, but I don't <laughs> think our viewers would want to watch us for four hours because I'm really excited about cloud. But you can put some stuff in the cloud. My only warning about cloud, though, is that it does get compromised every so often. Mm. So Dropbox has been compromised five times in the past two years. Mm. So if you start putting employee records up there, mm. could run into a problem. There's a risk. Put a, a, anything with a social security number on <clears> there, <throat> copies of credit card transactions, mm. anything like that, 
you may run into some issues, especially when it comes to PCI compliance or any other kind of compliance stuff you may have for your industry. So just be aware that cloud is good, but cloud is also bad. Um, there's also like these kind of hybrid approaches. So I, I brought along just a sample of what you know, uh, a small network attached storage device might look like, where you can put your files uh, onto these little drives over here, and they are redundant. So if I can pop them out, you can kind of see how what a redundant drive array looks like. And that's really and so, small. So you have it's a, little, it's a little piece. Yeah, it's just little ones. Uh, of course, this is for a micro office, so something where you'd have only two or three people working. Mm -hmm. uh, the much bigger ones are, are fantastic. I just didn't feel like bringing one down to the <laughs> studio. But no, that's um, great. you can have a, the, the way that RAID works is that you have a redundant copy. Mm -hmm. So anything you write to your little RAID device gets copied twice. And then everything that can go on here can go into the cloud. I see. So you have multiple copies. Right. So this is like a good hybrid solution. It's particularly good for Hawaii because working directly off the cloud means you're going to the mainland for mm. every little thing. Uh, if you work with a hybrid cloud solution, you mm -hmm. have some files here, mm -hmm. and then you have the backup on, uh, you know, in a cloud mm -hmm. provider on the mainland. You still get all the advantage of the high speed of having all your files locally, mm -hmm. and you still get your stuff backed up onto the cloud. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hybrid cloud solutions are very affordable. You don't have to come to me to find them, and there's a bunch of different vendors. I particularly like Netgear, uh, but that's just me. Uh, I really advise looking at, uh, at different providers for that. But have a backup of your files. That's number one. That's your most important thing to start your backup thinking. <laughs> uh, tip number two yes. is actually to have all of your important passwords and your vendor contact information at hand. Now, okay. this isn't hard to do. Go down to your local office supply store uh, and you know pick up some folders. Get all of your vendor contact information. Have all of your account numbers there. So this is hard copy. Uh, you can have a printout of, you know, just a simple Word document mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. put all this stuff into. Mm -hmm. But the idea is this. When everything is going wrong, do you really want to try to find your Hawaiian Tell bill mm -hmm. to find out your account number with Hawaiian Tell? Mm -hmm. Or do you really need to try to find your insurance policy? Why not just put it all on one page? That's Let's a great idea, even just for personal. Just for personal, personal stuff. Too. Now, we do this for our clients already. We make these big, bright red binders, so it's really obvious. <laughs> in case like, of emergency. In case of emergency, <laughs> here's a big, right, bright red binder. You don't have to go red. You can go yellow or blue or green or orange, whatever you mm -hmm. want. But if you make it kind of obvious, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it makes it really simple. Right. And I told you, this, stuff is, yeah, and this stuff is simple. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. But you just don't think to do this, right. something like that. They don't think about it until something really bad happens. And then, I like that. then, they, get, then they get the big bill from us, and they're confused, right? You know. <laughs> so uh, have your important vendors and password stuff in there. Uh, there's also uh, a good tool that I like to recommend. It's called KeePass, K-E-E-P-A-S-S. -S. Website is keepass.info. It is a free tool that allows you to store all of your important usernames and passwords in an easy to uh, store place. And it's, hmm. a, it's a very highly encrypted file. In fact, it's so safe you can email it back and forth. Wow. Um, and feel safe about and it. And feel safe about it. As long as you have a good password on there, you're OK. Uh, if you lose that really good password that you <laughs> used to keep your other passwords, you're out of luck. I'm oh sorry. Oh, gosh. So that key pass file is a fantastic tool. It okay. allows you to put all your vendors, your usernames and passwords to all of your email accounts, anything uh, you may have with your electronic filings. All right, and I know we are running short on time, so we're going to go with our last four very quickly. Okay. So number three is installation media. Have all of your installation programs in one place. If you bought your stuff off of Amazon, it's very convenient to go there later and download your again. software programs mm -hmm, again. Mm -hmm. Things like Microsoft Office, QuickBooks, important things that you need to operate your business. Mm -hmm. That's item number three, installation media. Item number four is network documentation. Now, documentation is super duper important because if any part of your network falls apart, gets damaged, you can put it all back together again. It's important for insurance reasons. It's important if you bring another IT professional in to get your thing back up and running, how do they do it? Without documentation, it's like working blind. Mm. Um, so that's number four, network documentation. Number five, every industry has some sort of line of business app. Uh, line of business apps are often very compl complicated and convoluted to try to restore. 
ask, my tip to you is to ask your line of business provider to see if there's an online version or a cloud version. Hmm. QuickBooks does this, oh, Sage does come, this. Come back up. Right. That way they are responsible for keeping it up and running. And of course, item number six is to look at your physical files. Every business has some sort of physical files that they need in order to operate. If you don't have some of these critical files, you're in trouble. Hmm. The good news is that there's uh, a technology around that's been around since the, a very long time. It's called microfilm. And no. believe it or not, other than stone tablets, it is rated the highest shelf life. Really? Mm -hmm. So it's microfilm. Stuff in the libraries, right? Stuff in libraries will last 100 years. Interesting. So number okay. one, files. Number two, important vendors and passwords. Number three, important installation media. Number four, network documentation. Number five, line of business app. And number six, have your your physical files secured in such a way that you can retrieve them later. Yes. Great. Very good. Thank you. Those are all awesome tips. Good thing there's a rewind on this uh, video. I right? know because he's talking fast. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with me with well, me here today, Attila. Um, Hope everybody got all those tips. He gave us some six great tips for saving your data in a disaster. This is High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Indy Matsuki, on ThinkTech Hawaii, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.